Hey everybody, David R. Becker here with Becker Art, and we're Happy New Year, Happy New Year. Um, we are going to start out all from the scratch, from going from the beginning of everything, <laughs> and so here we go. Um, welcome everybody, and today's beer is a one from the case I had last week, the same brand, it was Polliner, um, but this one's just a regular, and um, still good. Uh, I just didn't have anything else. I was like, boy, I forgot to get the beer out there this week. So let me just pour this out real quickly. We'll get going for a happy new year. And this is one in the case of four different types of beer in this case that I had gotten. So um, anyways, so today we're going to um, go into the beginning of things. We're going to start out. We're not doing the one color study yet, and we're going to do that next week. But this week I want to talk about um, this uh, the sunset scenes and stuff. And we'll be talking about that in a second. And um, let me just go down here to our website. And so for anybody that's new here, just always go to my website and I, I'm gonna try to um, redo my website um, to get some more things. I'm actually working on it right now, but it's, it's a lot harder than I thought. But um, there's my website, uh, beckerart.net or davidrbecker.com, either one. Go there and find out all the things about what I'm doing. These get all the um, the pictures for these paintings. When I'm going to do the paint alongs and all that stuff is all here on my website. My supplies are always my Holbein watercolors. There's my list. Somebody was asking me about the list for the um, gouache. I will try to get that. I don't have the actual list of those yet, um, but I will get those to you in, in time. And there's my brushes. You can get my brushes online. And my Legion paper, and I'll be talking about it in a second too. So let's go to our tabletop real quickly here. And I'm gonna, I just want to show you what I did this afternoon and how we're going to start this. One second. So here's what we did this afternoon. And it's okay. It's nice and bright, but I didn't get it as clean as I wanted to. And I wanna, what I want to do in this painting is show you that anytime you do a, for beginners, and I always say, beginners here and I'm talking about people who have never even touched a brush with um, watercolor but usually sunset scenes with um, silhouette shapes is a really good way to start because you get to do everything that possibly is being done in watercolor and I changed the sky from the photo that you see up there I changed that completely but today I'm using Stonehenge Aqua 300 pound paper for anybody who's new that I use 300 pound paper because I don't like it curling up on me so if you get 140 you can spray the back I've taught that before where you spray the back and then tape it down and then um, it won't won't curl up on you as much um, but I like using 300 pound just Stonehenge Aqua I love it because I can also lift out uh, on this one this is about two washes on this it wasn't as good as some of my students have done when I go to classes my students are better than I do I know I have to start <laughs> well I'm, I'm, I always do these first and then they do it and so they got some really good they listen to what I say and so listen to what I say sometimes instead of looking what I'm doing <laughs> and so the thing is is that on here you see I had changed the colors from more of a yellow and in the photograph you have up here up here you have more of a pink and blue and then you had that clouded stripe line right through her head which I took out completely and so we're going to talk about that in a second here. Let me go to my supply or back to my um, value studies. And so here's the value study. Very simple value study. I take it down and break it down. Each one of my photographs, I break down to black and white. And I try to th see not the middle tones. I try to see right away the black and white of things. And so here's what I do. Here's the colored version on the right here. And um, all right, here's the colored version. And here I'd make it black and white. And as you can see, very simple composition. And that's what you get when you're doing um, these scenes of um, silhouette scenes and sunset scenes. That's how I tell my students, beginning students, to go out there and do a lot of sunset scenes. It's really good when it comes to learning how to draw. You have to draw this really well. And I'll show you in a second how I want you to get the drawing down. And then um, also the composition is shown by large lights and large darks. And usually the background is light. And the sunset scene and the foreground's dark like this a silhouette shape and so basically all you have to do here is do a silhouette shape and so we go back to our tabletop here and you'll see that that's what i did made basically this down here and my person and the the articles that are standing on the ground there are all dark though they do have some lights in their middle tones that are vibrant in color and um we're not going to think too much about color today. We're going to just pick whatever colors you want in the back in the sky. 
I did, you know, as I added the sun right in the middle here, but I have to tell you right now that I put this in with gouache <laughs> because, like I said, I did, a, I did a terrible job of my first wash this time, and so I had to do two or three washes on this. And so some of the students did it in one wash, like I like to have people do. Do it in one wash and you're all good. And so let me just test the beer real quick, since we get going here really quickly. <laughs> um, again, this is a Polliner, and it's a Weiss beer. Actually, this is their, this is their Minchin Lager. And um, as you can see right here. Ah, let me think. It's still a great beer. Yeah, this is a really good beer. I think again, another 10.5 out of 11. So it's not the best beer here, but it is really, really good. So cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers to you. And please invite all your beginner friends that have um, been with me or that you want, want to start out from scratch and want you to see how I do these things. Um, please let them know because, um, again, I'm going to be doing this for free forever and stuff. And I just like to have every, all my students um, really learn a lot. And if you have a question, please ask it on the right over here. I'm going to see who's here today. And boy, oh my gosh, you guys have been talking a little bit before I even got here. <laughs> so Happy New Year, everybody. And let me just go through this really quickly and see if there's any questions. Merry, happy, happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year. Second year. Yes, this is the second year. And um, I've been teaching quite a long time. And I've really gotten to like doing these. And I've been loving how well you guys are getting. It's always good to start from scratch and start from the beginning again because you maybe have forgotten some things I, I learned or taught, taught about before. So let's say put this aside now for now. I'm going to show you how we're going to do it better than this one. And so, and you're going to do the sky any way you want. And I'm going to start out first off with how to get this on here. How to get the, the drawing on here. And so either you're going to freehand it, and I talked about that in my newsletter today or this week on Tuesday. But you can freehand it, but I want it to look perfect. I want it to be looking like what you want to draw and be the finished product. Now, when you're doing landscapes and you do like a tree, you do a river, that's all good. And it's not that important as getting the drawing right. Because if a rock is off or a tree is off or grasses are off a little bit, it's not going to matter that much if you have a good composition. But if you're doing something that where there's a bicycle in there or a person or a building, you got to get perspective right, you've got to get the proportions right. Those things have to be done right. And otherwise, unless you have a really, really abstract style, those things are going to affect your um, subject matter a real lot in your composition. And especially your drawing, your drawing has to be on. And so for my students, when I do my classes uh, out there, I have them just trace. And there's many ways of tracing, like I said in my newsletter. But the easiest I've found, um, and I've actually been testing a bunch of things this week, the easiest is still using transfer paper. This is transfer paper. Just take transfer paper. You can get transfer paper or graphite paper. They're both different. And you can even make your own graphite paper by with graphite. You buy a thing of graphite or a pencil and take a pencil and just rub it on the back of your big drawing or your big photograph, your black and white. And if your printer doesn't do 1117 and only does eight and a half by 11, go into the settings and see if you can't have it done in two in two passes, like two sheets of paper that will, um, I keep on forgetting the word for that, <laughs> where they will put it together. They'll, um, they'll arrange it so that this painting will be 1117, the size that you want it. And usually you want it to be around 10 by 14 because this is 11 by 15. So a little bit smaller than the paper or the exact size of the paper. And so get that to be a black and white. You can have that done on two eight and a half by 11s and some printers just print it out like that. Or take it to an Office Max or digital file or actually have some of my students um, send an email to their Office Max close by and then they, for 75 cents or 50 cents, they'll do a black and white copy of it. And then you just take this, this is transfer paper and you take the darker side, the black side, the shiny side and this transfer paper, I got to warn you though, it, it doesn't erase. So. Graphite paper does erase, so it all depends on what you feel better for you. But though transfer paper um, is a little bit more, it gets a little bit darker, so you can see it. Where graphite paper, sometimes you don't, if you don't press hard enough, you don't see it. Then you place on top of that, you place your, your photograph, then get yourself a pencil or pen. I like to use a pen usually, and then just trace it. Trace it, and don't trace things like in the sky, clouds, anything that's going to be dark because um, it's gonna have a big black line on there. So basically by drawing this um, and just going around it, 
you don't have to put the weeds and all that stuff. That stuff you can put in with your with your pencil later or with your paint. And so here again, that's probably I found the easiest way to get your drawing down onto the paper if you need to get it correctly and you're not very good at drawing. So that's one way, the easiest way I found. I've had, I just ordered these two things. There's a thing called uh, Neo Lucia. Uh, and um, there's two different versions of this where you look through this little item here. And um, I've tried both of them. Actually, today in class, I tried a couple of them and to see how they work. And they're okay, but it's not the same as easy as this. This is so much easier to do with the, with the transfer paper. Now, I don't mind if you go ahead and to really try, attempt to do it freehand because that's what you're going to learn sooner or later. If you do enough freehand, um, you're going to learn how to draw from your imagination and from uh, tracing a photograph. So basically, if you're trying to trace a photograph freehand, you know, and for me wanting you to just get the watercolor down so we can show you watercolor, that's um, the reason I have my classes like that because I don't have time to teach you how to draw within that workshop time. And even these Thursday nights, I don't have enough time for you sitting there and draw the whole thing. That's a drawing class. And so for this, if you just go ahead and trace it, I'm all fine with that. And it's a, and even in that way, you can learn sometimes too and what you're drawing and what's the most important part of the drawing. All right, and so that's all about drawing. And if you have any questions about that, please let me know. I am gonna to try to do a class of drawing um, in time. It's gonna be like probably a, three, a two month thing. And so, and you're gonna to have to work with me every day for two months, because it's, it's really hard to learn how to draw. It's a tough thing, but it really helps out everything. And so let's get going here. Um, when it comes to what the sky is going to be, it's going to be a light. And you decide on if you want the sun to be in the shot, you want to be out. I want to have the sun right around this area because I want to kind of make it look like this has a really bright red, um, like a warm. See, how I made it so it looks like this time I think I want to make it right onto the person. I want to bring the, the sun right over to here, right against them. So it really almost blurs them out. That's how bright I want it. I wanted to show you lighting, a light source, and then I could also put rim lighting on it. And I did that with um, transparent or opaque watercolors, which are called gouache. And so I use gouache on that. You don't have to. You could also put masking fluid down. And if you need, know that something's going to be really bright, you can do that later on. But f for those beginner beginners, I just want you to realize that this part in the front is dark and the spot in the in background is light. And I want to show you that this covers everything in watercolor. You can do the background light, and I want it to be all soft edge, so I can just wet the whole surface, which I'm going to do. So to get a soft edge, and again, to start from the beginning, I'm going to wet the whole paper. I don't care about down here so much, because that's going to be done later, but the whole sky is going to be wet. And then I'm going to use enough pigment so I can then make my washes all soft edged. I want all my washes soft edged. All right, we got quite a few of you here today. I'm so happy that you guys are all here. And cheers, everybody. Um, this has become very popular, and I'm really, uh, really happy that you guys are all coming and learning how to do watercolor. That's my reason for doing them. I really want you to learn how to do watercolor. And it's so much fun seeing how you guys are advancing. It's just really, that's the reason I do it. I just love to see you guys get better. So right around here, right around the face, I'm just going to put in a little bit of the yellow. And I'm going to try to do this all in one wash this time. Last time I did it in three washes. And anytime you do more than one, you're going to lose the vibrancy of the paint. Because this is transparent watercolor, and it's almost like stained glass, that the white is really what's making it bright. And so if you want the color, then you use bright colors, and then you put it so you can see the white through it. And then if I do it opaquely, then that's kind of defeats the purpose of having a white paper. So I'm going to go in here. And now if there is some little bit of darkness on my, my color here, I'm just going to wipe that away on my towel. And also if anybody who's new here, I use a towel under everything I paint. Um, I just wash these later on. I put them into the um, washer and I just bleach them. And I just, that way I don't have to use paper towel in my hand at all times. I just wipe it down here. I find that has been a really, really kind of cool thing to do. So I'm going to make it kind of warm down here because the sun's not all the way down yet. And it's going to go from an orangey red down here. I'm going to kind of make it kind of a little bit darker red down here, right by the, where the ground starts. And now see, it's all going to get soft on its own. And I'm going to try to do that wash and then leave it alone. 
If I want to do clouds and stuff like that, that's a whole different story, which I will try to do with some of them to show you. But now I'm going to go in here with some more yellow orange, and I'm mixing yellow and orange. And the colors I'm mixing, this is um, a really yellow, and, and so I think it's also mixed with permanent yellow light. I, I kind of mix them together because yellows are just they're so close. I mean, there's not much difference between a lot of the yellows. They're just really bright. And a lot of times I'll even put white in them just so that they they tone down a little bit because they're so vibrant sometimes. So now the yellow will go to an, up here, I'll go to an orange again. And actually, if you're doing it where it's, the sky is blue, you almost should go to a green, a light green, and to a light blue. Um, so, and people find that that's like, oh, there's no green in the sky. Yes, there is. There's a lot of green in the sky. Um, it's this light green that goes from green to blue. So you do a real light wash here. Again, this is all wet, so it's all gonna be, it's all gonna be um, floating together, give its own soft edges. You don't, as a watercolor, you never have to soften an edge. It happens on its own. It just happens by itself because you let the water and you're letting the pigment float into the water. My favorite, either freehanding on tracing paper or exactness is needed. Tracing paper over an image on my laptop screen and using a transfer graphite paper. Okay, that's cool. So Paula has another way of doing it. There's many ways of getting that that drawing on there. Freehand, you know, gives you some of your look. Like um, when you're freehanding something, it kind of, you don't get it to look like the photograph because it's not going to be as tight as the photograph. And so you'll you'll put little things into it. Like you, I remember Sargent used to have in his work, if you look at his work, Sargent, John Singer Sargent, if you look at his work, you'll see sometimes that he had a lot of his noses were all kind of like a sergeant nose. And so things like that happen when you're doing freehand. You get to kind of make things the way you do. And it kind of lends itself in the fact that then it kind of gives you a style. So and it, like um, freehand, it doesn't mean that you have to make it look just like the photograph and you'd be really good by making it look just like the photograph. It means that you give it, you know, the three dimensional shape of something. When you learn how to draw, you're learning how to see it three dimensionally. And that's one thing um, my teachers never taught me. I had to learn that on my own, is that I can now draw anything that I've seen. And because I learned how to look at it in a three-dimensional way so that you see the image as a three, 3D object. And so you can rotate it, you can turn it any way you'd like, even though it may be one way because you know what it looks like on the side you know how um, the depth of things are, and that's what you learn by doing things freehand. And that's how come it helps you. It's not that you get better that you can just make it look just like a photograph. That's not what the purpose is of learning how to draw. It's yes, it's make, you want to make it kind of look like the photograph and get the, the proportions and all that right. Yes, that is correct. But it also helps you to see things in 3D and three dimensional. That's something you don't really n realize until you get really good at it. Because then you start realizing, oh my gosh, I could take this bike now and I could turn it any way I want because I know proportions. I know how to, that's going to make you study things like the arms and the muscles in the arm when you're in life drawing so that you can ro make the arm do anything you want because you know how the muscles work and stuff like that. So it's stuff like that that really um, helps it out a lot. So now these are my lights. I all, always in watercolor, we work out with from a lights to a dark. And so th this is all smooth, right? So now I'm going to get a couple of little clouds in there, I think. I want to get some clouds, some darker clouds. And I can even put lighter clouds in there. And But I want to make this part light. Hold on a second here. All right, so we're gonna go in here now and just get some dark clouds. I'm just looking through my colors here. And I'm gonna go with like a darker blue. I can maybe put a little violet in there, dull it down a little bit. And we're gonna come through here and I'm just gonna put a little cloud. This is a darker cloud. If I wanna put a lighter cloud in, it wouldn't make sense on a scene like this because I could make it lighter, but I have to make it underneath the cloud because underneath this cloud, let's say we put a little bit of yellowish white in that area because it's underneath and it's getting the bottom of the cloud. So here I'm actually using white. I'm actually using white and a little bit of blue. 
And see, by um, this is one reason I use white, and it's still wet, so it's going to be soft edged. And over here, I may put in a little bit of light, like there are some light clouds that can go through here. And I'm picking up some of the color that's underneath still. And so don't be afraid of using opaque colors. Somebody just asked me about Vertiter. I just saw, um, on, I think it's Facebook, somebody asked me about Vertiter. I think Elaine, Elena, she may be watching. But she asked me about Vertiter Blue and how, how she thinks it's very opaque. Well, yeah, it, it may have a little bit. This is, um, this is Vertiter right here. And yes, it is feels a little bit opaque, um, like it has white in it, but it doesn't have white. It's just ground a little bit more. And so if you use it more within the water, then it doesn't become as, everything is transparent. Even my, even my colors that have white in it could become very transparent. It's how much water you use and how much you lay into the water, how much pigment you lay into the water. If you use it really thick, of course, it's gonna be opaque more, the, the colors that have a little bit more opaqueness to them. But if you use it very wet and you're letting things float, then it won't be as much. And now I'm gonna put a couple of darker clouds in here. And again, this whole sky is wet. I'm gonna go by his head. Oh, I can go right through her head, right? Because her head's gonna be dark. And so a little bit of darks underneath here. Let me just pull this away. And now this is to dry. Now, if you're a beginner and you see that your, your paper is starting to get unshiny, that means it's matte, and then you have to either wait till it dries and re-wet it, or um, take your mister, get with yourself one of these misters, and I'm going to take it, I'm going to pull it up here like this, I'm going to spray from a distance, I'm going to first shoot it forward, not at the painting, then I'm going to go like this and bring it over, and then just let it go over it a little bit, because I want I still don't want it to be wet enough, but I don't want to squirt it at it like this, I don't want to go straight down at it, because it'll be too much water, I just want to keep it a little bit moist and then because I still didn't get it done completely yet and about this painting <laughs> it's pretty much the sky and then you're almost done because the rest is pretty much fairly simple because it's just hard edges and you have to wait till it dries and get your um, beautiful washes in there or your beautiful colors which is not that much color because it's gonna be dark I do want to get a little bit more vibrant down here and I do want to get a little bit more a little bit orange through here, this area. Again, I can go right through anything here. Don't go around this stuff. This stuff is going to be dark. And that's one of those things that you really want to learn as beginners, that don't go around things. Go through them, especially if they're going to be darker later. Because then, if I miss a spot on this bike, it'll look like it's reflected of that into that. So here we had light, right? I used white and yellow. I used white and yellow in there, and so I'm going to do a few more of those. Bring that over here because it, it, you know, it got it wasn't enough to make it thick. The thicker I go, the less it's going to bleed. It's going to, it's still going to be soft edge because it's still all wet there. I can go close to the sun with a white and yellow. And the white, that's why the paper, and that will always be lighter than than anything that you put in with white paint. It, the white paint is not as bright as the white paper. So if you want the lightest light, you have to use the white of the paper. You cannot get it with just pure white unless. You do it later on with gouache, and then you do it with the gouache thick, and you're covering up that color. All right, so there we have it. There we have the, the whole sky. I'm going to keep it right at that. I made this a little bit harder edge right there. You notice right by the sun, and that's okay. Um, it's the center of interest area right here. This whole, it's, everything in here is the center of interest. There is nothing that's not the center of interest in this area with the subject matter, because that's the subject matter. It's center of interest. Very simple, and like I say, for beginners, try to go into that um, field of pictures. Go into sunsets, find yourself some really neat sunsets with silhouetted shapes in front of it. It's a great way of getting to learn how to do watercolor, because you're doing set, wet in the wet like we're doing now. Next, we're gonna wait for this dry, we'll get hard edges, but always the big areas first, and that's my light, all my lights are done. Um, I'm pretty much finished with my lights. Now I'm gonna go to my middle tones and darks, step number two, middle tones and darks. Hey, Marianne, I see in Crystal Lake. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions here? Let me see. No other questions. All right. So now down here, I'm going to wet the surface and I'm going to get my big dark down here. My big middle tone, my big dark. I'm not going to go into here yet. I'm not going to go and get my this subject matter yet because that has to be all hard edged. And it's all wet back there still, and I don't even want to try that. I mean, you, you can't do it. 
I don't need it to have soft edges. I need to have hard edges, so you have to wait till it's totally bone dry. So I'll go into this area right now, and I'm going to just wet it all evenly. And then I'm just going to not use one color black. That's one thing. Um, most watercolor instructors don't let you even use black or white. I do because I'm, I'm explaining you the reason you, how you use it and why you want to use it. The um, reason I like to use black instead of mixing your blacks is because it's easier for one. And I can still make those colors a black. The reason students or teachers want students to mix their blacks is because they want it more colorful than just a, a black that doesn't have any color in it. So it's like void of color. Well, I just take black. This is my black in the corner over here. And I mix my dark colors into that. So I'll get a purple black or a dark blue black or a red black. I'll just take red and I put in the black. Or I mix all those together and that kind of makes my dark. And so I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to... I can, I can start it with a wash at first that's a little bit more not as dark. That's fine. But, or you just go in there and then just have fun. Let the things drip and make do things in the wet wash. You know, they got that pouring where they do a lot of pouring. People love that look, you know, right? Because it's like you're just taking and pouring a bunch of stuff. See if I take this and push this sideways like this. You see how it just kind of runs down? Well, that can be really cool. And sometimes you want to use it as an effect. Like when you're taking a lot of water and just letting it run down. And you may want that to look like, see how it's just going to take its own shape. I'm going to take some red here now. I'm just going to put it in there. And just want it to be a beautiful wash. And this is also, will teach you how to do different kinds of washes. Like not every wash is the same. You may want to put more pigment or see what kind of color. But see how it's like, it almost looks like grass. When it goes down like this, you can actually force it downwards. You can, you can go like this on the table and it will force it down. See how it's like forcing it down a little bit. You can do that in the opposite direction to make it look like grasses. You can do that. Um, there's so many things you can do. And I always talk about doing a really cool wash. That's what I mean. Just do a, a wash that's very interesting looking and very fresh. You want to get in there with a brush stroke and, and get done. I was telling my class today that we used to have competition in class at the American Academy where you try to do a watercolor in the least amount of brush strokes. The least amount works always the best, you know, the least amount. So we would do, you know, we try to do the whole wash in like maybe five steps, five brush strokes. And how can, how can you do that? Well, you go like this. You try to take your paper and your brush and you don't lift, don't lift your brush. Just keep on going across, get all that paper in there. But every time you lift up, that's one. Now that was one. Then you pick up some more pigment. This will be number two. And you just keep on going and you see how many brush strokes you can do to do a painting. And the least amount usually works the best because you're leaving everything alone and you're making things look really fresh. And to do a fresh wash, the best way is to put down water and a lot of pigment and let it do its own thing. Let's see, I'm putting out nice darks through here. I'll put some grasses going down. You can also do a bunch of techniques and stuff, but I want to get into techniques tonight. I just want to get into the lights and darks. And then for next week, we're going to do one color. Then the following week, we'll do two color. We'll keep on going on. And so we're going to get better and better at using the pigment the way you want it to use. And then also values, learning about values and patterns. You know, a value pattern is very important in your work. This one is very simple. The whole foreground and the subject matter is dark, the background's light. Very simple composition. And I can put any color I want down here. It is very warm, but that doesn't mean I can't put some blue in there too and some purple and let that float around in there. And I can even reflect some of these colors above. Maybe this grass is a little bit wet. So I'll take some verdure blue or some horizon blue that I use in the sky. And I'll just shove it in there a little bit just to show that color so it converts to be the same. That happens sometimes when there's some wetness in or wetness in the grass or shininess in the grass and you'll just pick that up a little bit or maybe there's a puddle there whatever it doesn't really matter it's just that you want to try to get the colors all together working together and this is still very wet so i can i can make textures this would be the time also with a lot of pigment to throw salt in there if you wanted a salt technique um, i could scrape I could take my fingernail, which I can't because I have my gloves on, but I could just go in here and just, oh, I can still do those gloves. See, you can just scrape away in there. But I wanted the pigment just to be floating. I just wanted to have a nice wash of granulation happening in the paint pigment. So any questions, please let me know. I, I talk a lot for anybody who's new here. I try to talk a lot so that I get you to understand a lot of things that I'm doing. I want you to know what I'm doing at all times when I'm painting. So I put a little bit of blue in there. A little bit darker in the foreground here. 
and this will dry very smooth and um but that's okay because it's not about not so much about down here it's all going to be about here i will put grasses little detailed grasses in there too and i don't have as much um red in the sky as i feel i should have used like in because of the redness in the in the, in the ground but that's okay it's not going to be that big a deal not going to be that much of a deal. And one thing about Stonehenge paper, look at how if I put some water in there. I can pull out a lot of areas. I can just pull out like a whole area by just lifting. You can lift really easily with the Stonehenge paper because it doesn't suck in to the paper as much as like a Arches does. Arches kind of sucks in because it's very porous and it's a very good paper, but it, it sucks in a lot of the paint. And this sits more on top. I mean, it sucks in two, but it's not as much. All right, and so there, and I'm kind of stalling here because I, the next step is just to go in here and get the bike, and I think some of it is getting close. I may have to use my little hair dryer here, which is not a hair dryer; it's a stripper. <laughs> it's a hot, it's a um, Wagner heat gun, but I think I'll use it just for a second here. So here's my power stripper, but uh, <laughs> I use it for shrink wrapping. But if I go a little farther away, I can get this to dry. I want this to dry a little bit. So let me just turn off your sound here just for a second. Actually, it's not very loud at all. So I'm just gonna, it's not too loud. You're not, you're not gonna hear very much. Just enough to heat my area up here. I just need to have this area dry where the, where the um, bike is and the bench. And if you notice, she is not looking towards us. She's looking away from us. So, um, I'm going to make her look towards the sun. And so with that, then I will have to put the bars and stuff behind her. Let me just do this a little bit more. Yeah, this uh, looks like small grasses, and that's what I intended. You can do that. These use grasses right here. Paula just asked about the soft, she likes the soft edges. Well, soft edges give you that grass look, right? I could turn it upside down and have it all run that way, too. Now, I'm not going to put these big high grasses in there. Let me just turn this up, sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to put these high grasses like in this in the photo up here. I'm not going to do that. I just don't feel it needs that. I don't I don't like them, actually. So I'm going to make my grasses shorter. You know, I think it's going to be more about her. And cheers, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy 23. I hope everybody has a great 2023. And we all teach you how to do, be some great, great watercolorists. Cheers. <laughs> This is a super good beer. <laughs> Free hand, uh, what else we got here? Ask questions, guys. Especially if you're new. I do not mind you asking questions. And it's not, there are no stupid or questions. There may be some stupid <laughs> answers. I may give you, give you some stupid answers. But no, the questions are all great. So now I'm using my um, quarter inch brush. And I'm going to show you how to use this to get the really fine stuff. But usually what I do first is get the larger areas of dark. And I'm gonna start out with where the um, sun is coming right there. I, again, I put the sun into this shot. You as a beginner don't have to do that. You can just paint it just like you see the colors up here. Just do it like that if you'd like. Um, I'm gonna always do my paintings the way I want to. So I use the color, as long as I know the lights and darks are what they're supposed to be. The background's light and the foreground's dark. That's all I really need you to do. What colors you use, if you use those, I do ask you not to put that that's really straight line. You can put something through the head like I did like with her. I put this little bit of cloud through her head to show the d dimension. But don't put the straight line because unless you want to make it look like there's a lake back there and there's a land back there or something, you can do that or make those mountains back there. Um, but that line is just very geometrically a bad thing to put it right through the thirds here. And um, it just doesn't uh, it flattens the image. And then to have it go through her head there is really kind of a strange composition. So I would not put that in there if I were you. And, you know, the skies are kind of fun because they can be pretty much anything they wanted them to be. If I didn't do this one right, I could go back in. I could wash everything off and try again. That's one of the nice things about doing skies and learning with um, watercolor. It's really easy to do that with skies. All right, so let me go right into... I'm going to take yellow and orange, and I'm going to go right here next to the sun. I'm going to burn out her face. It's called um, Optical Scatter. It's um, a thing I learned at the Plain Air Fest by Carl. Let 
And so we're going to go through here. Yeah, Carl Bretzky, he taught me this. He had a class in two years in a row I've taken it. And um, really good, really good teacher. And so I do that first there. Then I go to red and like an orange, a bright, bright orange right after that. And I'm putting it on slowly and there's wet. And you'll see, I'm just going to put it on a few spots here and maybe on the, on the tire or on the um, seat of the bike, maybe a little bit, maybe on this side a little bit, but then the rest, I'm going to go right into a really dark, dark right away. I don't want it to be, um, like it's just a little bit of it shows it's like rim lighting almost. And then I'll go in with my darks and I'm going to dig like a purple, a lizard and crimson, maybe, maybe black, a little bit blue. And I'm just going to go on this side and then just start outlining and the outer edge is what's important on here because that's going to show what the um what this person looks like and that's you don't really have to put anything on the inside of there because that's kind of not as important as making sure that the outer edge looks like what it is and i'm gonna go right through the pole that's on, on that she's leaning on i'll put that back in there later and now i'm gonna try to make it a little bit wetter so it kind of softens itself up right here i don't like to soften edges. I, I like to have the watercolor do it for me. That's one thing great about watercolor is that it doesn't have to be softened. It just needs water and it softens itself. So now I'm going to go through here and you know it's not bad to maybe even get a little bit of the blue that you use in there like the verditor blue. Put a little bit of that in there to reflect what's above. And then we go down here and just and now it you know i'm getting very tight and detailed but that's okay inside here is all wet and then i just getting this and this is probably too far away so i'm going to start putting this a little bit darker there keep the keep the right bright red that's right next to the sun because that's where it's burning and it could start out with yellow to orange to red to dark now when it comes to doing a straight line and um you want to use a ruler, use one of these rulers, these star-shaped rulers. And I use it as a guide for my hand, not for the brush. I don't use the brush against it. I use my hand against it just to give me a straight line. So I put this right there and I just use it so that my hand can slide across. And then I just go with, with the brush and I, I like I'm drawing it, but now my hand is resting on something so I can make it nice and straight. So go right through here. And then down here, it's a little bit thicker. I'll bring it down a little bit. Like I say, I don't brush my, um, I don't take my brush against it. I take my hand against it. Uh, there are some people who use it as uh, for their brush, but I always find that then it has to be raised a little bit so that it doesn't go underneath. But, and also practice this on a scratch sheet of paper. Don't do it right on your paper that you're gonna be working on as you're painting, because if you don't know how to do something, you don't wanna just all of a sudden just start and paint it onto the, Paper. Do it on a couple of scrap sheets and see if you can get the nice straight lines. So I'm just using it as a guide for my hand. I'm resting my hand on it and it's straight, right? And so I'm just using that as a guide. One way of getting a straight line. Now, while it's wet, you know me, I like to then put other colors in there. And so I'll do the same thing here. Now I have it straight, but I'm going to take a little bit of orange and I'm just going to float it in there. Put it right into the right into the side of the bench, right into that dark I just put in. Here, this I don't need a um, thing, so I'm just going to keep on going with a nice dark. Anything that gets closer to the sun, which is right there, will always be maybe a slightly little bit more red or orange or yellow. So you can start it out with that, and then you can always just switch it to a really dark dark. And then once you mix something on your palette, you know, keep it there so you know what you use, and just keep on adding to it, adding to that color. Make a little lines here. There's a line. Uh oh, some questions, guys. What black do you use? Um, the black I use is peach black. Mine seems to turn out ch chalky. No, no matter how I mix it. Oh, okay. Um, I use peach black. It's a kind of a warm black. It, but anything you put in that's opaque into the black will make it look kind of um, gray. So watch out for that. So always um, use your black with very transparent dark colors like. Prussian blue, um, permanent violet, alizarin crimson. Those are colors that I have um, are very, very um, transparent. So it's definitely not going to make it look um, chalky. But if you use some of these like horizon blue, it's going to make it look chalky. Or any color like the verditor head looks a little bit opaque. Anything that looks a little bit opaque 
don't mix it with your um oh wait this is not supposed to be dark is it oh made it wrong right there okay that was supposed to be two little lines and a big line so you want to see how to get rid of something <laughs> so to get rid of something you take paper towel which is somewhere here where's my paper towel it's right on my feet hold on one second Bye. Cheers. I love the movement in the clouds. Thank you. I just tested the sample pack of Holbein. I really like them. They are smooth and responsive and lay down nicely on arches. Well, thanks, Dave. I love the consistency, too. And so far, they haven't dried either, just like you said. Yeah, the Holbeins don't dry. They don't dry hard as hard clumps. Well, let me show you how to get rid of this, this big line. that shouldn't be all the way. Though it could be that way. But if you ever want to get rid of something, just wet it. And dab the paper towel on top of it and you can just pull it up especially on this paper like I said on this paper it's very um it doesn't absorb as much so just real lightly I'm just gonna take and push it put it up and see how I just got rid of it the dark dark because this is supposed to be two small lines in this bench though the benches are like this so I could have left it but see I'm just I've just basically wiped it out I'm just putting water on it it didn't soak into the paper very much it's not I don't have many um, staining colors on my palette I don't have um, like a phthalo color, and I think my most um, staining color is Prussian blue, but that is not really that staining either. So let me go in here. And again, once I put water down, I put other colors in there too. And so it's not just one, ever, it's never just one color of, of anything. You know, it's usually a few colors. Once it's wet, I then put other colors into that and let them float in there. So I'll put a little orange down here. Maybe the feet can have a little bit of a vibrant, brilliant orange. I use brilliant orange. It's almost like a red orange, and it's very, very vibrant. Any other questions I missed? I'm suffering in the horizon. Oh, I think we're good. All right, so this is probably not as interesting to watch as when you're doing details because, again, basically I'm just copying what I drew down. I'm just copying, and here it looks like there's some kind of sack he's got there, but I'm thinking, you know, you got to think of yourself also, like, okay, a right, person's riding a bike, um, what would it be carrying with you? Probably a backpack, so I just made this a backpack, and so how do I make it look like a backpack? I just make it dark, and I put a handle that's going around the shoulder, so I'm just going to do this, and there, I put, like, the, the satchel part that goes around the thing, so it just makes it more obvious that what it is, you know, because it's hard to see what it is because it's silhouetted doesn't have to be exactly what is in the picture uh, if you can make it look more like something other than what it is and it doesn't look like anything in particular then you do that you, you're the artist you make it look like something that you wanted to make it look like and I figure you know most backpackers or, the, or most bicycle drivers will have a backpack on sometimes it's easiest because they don't have a basket looks like and so and so here I'm just going freehand with these lines and the tires now with the tires try to make them as round as possible um i know it's hard it's sometimes very hard to do a, a bicycle wheel because you have to do that nice nice round motion but draw it up there and then just take your spend your time a little more go a little bit slower you don't need to go fast on this part because this is detail and never go fast on detail you don't need to go fast on detail details about are what exactly what it states it is it's detail it needs to be correct it needs to have the drawing correct so you don't spend all that time drawing it correctly and then go in there and paint it not so nice. So give it give it time and give it a nice shape. Go slow. Learn how to do your brush strokes in one continuous movement. And I've, I've taught that last year a couple of times where you just, you know, take a sheet of paper, scrap sheet of paper, and then just, you know, use your pen, use your brush and just try different things with your brush. What can your brush do? How can you make a straight line? How can you make a straight line? Do you like pulling it, like pushing it sideways? What is it that you can do with this brush? Can you scumble it? You know, test your brush and just work at it and see what it can do. That's, um, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or very advanced. I like to do this sometimes just to kind of see how, um, get myself um, warmed up. If you do a lot of painting, a lot of things are while you're warmed up because if you do a lot of painting, those things are no longer anything you have to learn. You just do them automatically because you've been doing them so much. And that's when you're going to get to a point where the more you do, the more you learn, but it also 
gets you very comfortable with what you're doing and not have to think about everything you're doing. That's the problem with, you know, beginners are thinking about everything they have to do, you know, and um, the more the more your paintings you do, you get advanced, so you don't think about those things anymore. You just think about, oh, what color can I use there? Or how can I make something different? Or how can I do this? Or how can I do that? And that doesn't have to do with fundamentals. And so as a beginner, yes, it's really tough, but just don't worry about doing a lot of mistakes. Just do it. Just paint, paint, paint. That's how you get better. It's how every time I want to do something, that's how I've gotten better at it. Just do a lot of them. People ask me, how can I do a painting in, in you know, half an hour? And it's because of the many, many years I've been working as an illustrator and as a watercolorist. I mean, I've done thousands and thousands of paintings. And so to do one really quickly is no big deal. It's because I know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly what to put down and what to leave in. And All right, so there we have. We're going to put a little bit more warmth in the bike closer to the sun. We'll get a little bit more reds right here. And this is pretty thick. I don't need to have too many soft edges in this. I just want to get this looking nice colors in there and nice and dark so that it looks like a bike. And the spokes and stuff will come last because now I'm in my detail stage, right? I've gotten all my big areas. I've gotten all my big dark areas, large areas of medium and dark. And the final is always your detail darks. And that's what I, I kind of went into both of those anyways already. This is a detailed dark, you know, and so I kind of switched in from the big second wash, which is always your big darks, right into your final, which is your detailed darks. And so now I just have to put in my um, detailed, detailed darks. And so I'm going to take my rigger brush, the rigger brush being a really small rigger. Actually, I think I made one smaller than this, so. They make different size riggers. This one's the number eight, which I sell, or four, I mean, number four, but they do make like a even smaller one than that and I don't see it around right at the moment but this is still pretty pretty fine if you feel that you can't do these lines that thinly with a brush there's always um, watercolor pencils that you can use you know you can use a pencil a watercolor pencil and then just take your ruler and just pencil them in um, it's fine nobody's gonna say anything it's not against the law or anything like that here I'm gonna put this little back a little bit now I'm gonna try to even it out I'm going to do a couple like this where I'm not touching it. I just want to see if it slides nicely. And then once you start, don't stop. Just go through. Another one. These are the little reins. This is a kind of a more of a modern bench. I'm going through her because it's on the front side of her. Pick up. And also the consistency of your paint has to not have enough water, but not so much water that you are um that's blurring or that's like bleeding okay now go down a little bit farther and like i said you can use the ruler to go against it too um i kind of like doing this way better and if you don't get it perfectly straight that's almost better sometimes it almost makes it look more like a painting than if it's so so perfect then it's um hyper realism and that's fine but if you then the whole painting has to be super super perfect now, now I'm going to pick these little lines that were supposed to be there in the first place, going down in the side here, all the way down. The sides here is also down. And then I'm going to make it look like she has hair here. They have some little bit of, um, like you can see her hair instead of, I think she's wearing a coat and then like a hoodie, but I made it more hair, hair-like. And then, um... I'm going to make a really dark, dark right here. So you can kind of, oh, actually it's lighter. So now let's make it darker. I want to make this post that's behind her darker. All right. And now finally will be the, the, the grasses. And so the first grasses I'm going to do are the lighter ones. And I'll put darker ones on top of them. So how do I get that? And I'm just going to go with a red and a brilliant orange. This is Scarlet Lake for my red. Uh, female, yeah, it's probably a female. So thanks. <laughs> You're right. It is a girl's bike with the with the the poles not going across here. All right. Oh, I did forgot to um me put in the um the spokes on the bike. So the spokes on the bike, I'm just going to real lightly put in these little lines, going around in circle here. Just going to put in a few little spokes there.
Should this go, go through the... Um, oh, yes, it should. You're right. Thank you. Who said that? <laughs> hey, Pamela. Yes, they should. I made a mistake there, so I'm going to keep them going through the wheel here. There you go. Thank you. And now the spokes, the regular spokes on the wheel. And I used to build bikes, so I kind of, you know, again, always know your subject matter, and I know spokes. And so they're overlapping here and there. I don't put them in perfect, though, if you want to put them in, just like if you see them and you draw them in with the, you know, when you do the tracing, then that's fine. You can do that. No problem whatsoever. Matter of fact, the more you put in there, the better. Now, again, for my red, the red um, weeds and, and grasses, I'm going to just flick my wrist here a little bit to get some weeds in there. I'm not going to try to ruin all my, my soft edges here, but you can do a few up here. Here and there, you can put a few grasses. It doesn't have to, I don't like to uh, make it so literal that you have to put every single blade of grass in there. We're, I'm in a, more of an impressionist, so I impression, put a few impressions of grasses in there. And then the rest, you know, the viewer can understand. They know that this is grass. And so I'm just going to put a couple of maybe taller ones here and there. And then I'm going to put some dark ones in front of them so that it doesn't look all so perfect. You know, grasses, unless it was cut with a lawnmower, it wouldn't be perfect here. And so now I'm going to take my really dark, dark ones that are shadowed behind it. Let me put a few of those in there. And then I think we're almost done. We'll be done a little bit earlier than an hour, but this one's a little bit easier. It should be a little bit easier for you. I'm hoping it'll be, maybe it's not going to be easy for the beginners, but that's okay. You know, this is a good example of what to do for um, everything you can possibly do in watercolor. You can do with sunset scenes like this. You get your darks, you get your hard edges, soft edges. There's everything that you need as a watercolorist in this painting, this kind of painting. That's kind of like doing um, sunset scenes like this for beginners. It's a very good um, subject matter. And most people have images of sunsets they've taken. So you can put anything in front of it too. You can just put any kind of, uh, any kind of silhouette shape in front of the, um, a beautiful sky. Sometimes that's what I do. I just take any old um, beautiful sky and I put a whole other image of something in front of the sky. And now for final thing I will do, and this is only if you want to break, break the tradition of watercolor and go into doing gouache. This is my gouache palette. And so I'm going to open this up and gouache dries out a little bit easier. So I have this airtight um, thing, palette. And I'm going to use my white because this is opaque watercolor. And I'm going to take pure white, nice and thick. <sighs> and I will um, highlight th certain things with white. And it's going to stand out because I want to make it look like it's really, really shiny. And I lost the white of the paper. So this will get me some of the white of the paper back. And it'll make my bike look shiny. Like I'll do a part, couple of parts of the rim that looks a little bit shiny. Um, the side of her shoulder and or some parts where it looks like she has um, rim lighting on her. And that I do with opaque watercolors. And this is opaque. This is a re original watercolor um, gouache, not, not acrylic gouache. But um, this afternoon I used acrylic gouache, which is basically the same thing. It's just going to dry permanent, where this will not dry permanent hard. And so just getting you know a little bit of light in there to make it sparkle. I like to have things sparkle here and there. Oh, <laughs> just ripped off my glasses. Let me just show you closer up what I'm talking about here. So as you can see, and I'm um, out of focus. Hold on one second. Let me get this closer up. See, some of this is the sparkleness of the white that you have in there. Get my arm out of the way. And let me see if I can't focus it. There we go. So see how it's like you get the nice um, brights in there. Nice little speckles of light. Oh, now it's out of focus. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and so um, let me get back to farther away. So now I'm using a camera that um, I use for my 
saying so you're getting like 4k um <laughs> quality now hopefully it's really nice and clear and everything for you to see hit the like button folks thank you thanks thanks tina for having everybody hit the like button yes if you like the hit button and most importantly please tell your friends let them all know that i am doing this for free and you can learn and you can ask me questions and also when you go to um when you're finished with this go to my facebook page my becker art group page and facebook and post it and we'd love to see what you do that's where you can post it and ask questions if you have any questions afterwards and also you can in the description of the of this video if you want to put some more questions after it's done and you still can ask me questions even though the chat's done the chat is no longer going to be there after this then you just go into the descriptions ask your questions and then people will also see it and so it may be other people want to see it too so I mean, you may have a question that other people want to ask so here's this afternoon's and here's this evening's kind of a little bit different this one's a little bit clearer cleaner see how when i talk about um the skies being this this sky was three washes this sky was one wash um you know you can just tell the difference because of the quality of the freshness of a of watercolor freshness means a lot in watercolor if you want to look at fresh you need to get as at least amount of brush strokes in there as possible all right and so any matter let me see if we have any more questions and then we'll see you next week how would i sign this bomb if it's so dark i would sign it with light i would take a maybe a light blue like this or a light yellow and i would sign it with the light yellow and i actually will show you how i sign it and let me just get my small brush and so the side always depends on i think i would sign it on this side because i got so much weight on here side so if i put the signature on this side it would weigh that part down a little bit and so uh, I, I would put it on this side so that it doesn't weigh it down this side it down so much because the signature can also be part of the composition sometimes to have your eye go a certain direction and so let me just take this out. off of here and i'll show you how i sign it since we still have a couple more minutes here i will take white and yellow because i'm gonna it's gonna be opaque but that's okay your signature even in um award places you can still use your signature and make that opaque that doesn't matter it's your signature and that's fine so here i'll go around this side and i'll just write i use it like a pen i kind of hold it like a pen and i just kind of go in there and i and i do a my d then i do dots and basically for my letters and then i just i basically do it like i'm writing it a check and also practice that and see there's there's my signature and i also have a stamp which i use i have a stamp which i made many many years ago that i use and i just take the same light that i have here and i stamp my initials into the picture and i got that from the um black printing chinese black printing they have this little stamp they put i just use a regular stamp and i put my little signature on there where is your list of supplies or did i miss or i need to pause at the beginning yeah um arlene i usually have people just pause because i put it up there for about a couple seconds and so if you just go and um, look at the beginning of the video all the supplies are right there um and if you need to um again notice the names of the gouache that i use i don't have see i have almost 24 colors of gouache i have no idea what the names of them i think i threw the things away but i will find out what colors they are and then put them up there one day so again thanks you guys thanks and um always let me know let me know what's going on i think how what would you sign okay i hit that hit the like button thank you patina thanks everybody thanks so much for stopping by and give it a shot give it a shot let me see what you do and to get the photo of this or to get a photo there's in the link in the description you can find the picture and you can use this this is um royalty free imagery so you don't have to worry about copyright on that end of it so go ahead and um copy this image on there it is um copywritten free and so until next week and next week i will still not be in florida but in two weeks i will be in florida and if you're in florida and you want to take my at the villages i will be at the villages of doing a a paint party a watercolor workshop and in a, a mix uh, water media one which is actually acrylics and we're doing that and at the on the 15th i think 14th through the 19th i think it's something like that but we're down in florida this january and um 
But I'm still going to be doing the Thursday night. I usually always have time for that in my hotel room. So we'll still be doing that because by that time, you'll be doing, I think, two-color study and then a three-color study. And so we'll go from there. So thanks for joining me in this, um, this, in this um, year, 2023. And we'll see you next Thursday. Bye-bye.